Hello, I'm Amy Daron of Road Home Empower Yoga. I'm here to hang out with you in your living room or your bedroom or I don't know, wherever you're practicing. Maybe some of you are practicing in your New York City apartment in your kitchen, on your kitchen floor. Wherever you are, I'm so thankful that you wanted to hang out with me for a little bit. We're just going to breathe and move and stretch. And basically, we're just going to do that to create a space. Space to think clearer. Space to feel just a little more emotionally settled and relaxed. And then the body's just going to feel better with those two components. And in the physicality, we're going to have more length in the back of our legs or in our sides or in our hip flexors, uh, more space between our shoulder blades, more strength in our whole body. Um, you really can't fail with me. You really cannot fail. Every time you come on your mat, you're making a contribution to your wellness. And I'm looking to take you not just through a workout, but bring you um, some access to your own optimal well-being. So thanks. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> After you do this yoga with me, promise that you're going to go do something fun. I went and saw Horrible Bosses last night with my son for his birthday. Um, and I really want to stress to you that yoga is this. But really, yoga is the way that you show up and the way you live from your heart. Your hands are going to be shoulder width apart. Your knees are going to be hip width apart. We're just going to start out easy, so go ahead and drop your belly. And then from there, your butt sticks up, your chest stretches up. Your eyes want to look up a little bit or look at least straight ahead. But don't look down because then your chest really can't get length and lift. Now when you breathe out, press your palms down into the floor to press the upper back to into the ceiling, tailbone toward the floor, belly pulled in. On the inhale, sink your belly, look up. And on the exhale, round like an angry cat. Take your left leg straight back behind you. Your left toes will point down. It's not about just this bottom arm holding you up. It's about your core. So I want to see you take your fist, pull your core up and in. It's there. You have strength. It's always been there. And lengthen through the right arm. Push like crazy through that left foot. And I want you to breathe out, and I want to have you bring your right elbow to your left knee. Pull your leg right up into your chest, chin to your chest as well. Belly's got to pull in. See, the bottom arm can't do it, not even for me. Stretch through the leg, stretch through the arm. Exhale, pull tight. Inhale when you reach. And exhale when you bring the hand down and the knee down. Go ahead and just press your hips back towards your feet. Pull back up. Take your right leg, stretch it straight back behind you. This right hip, you don't want to roll it up. You want to keep the hip rolled down so the hips are what we call square. You're going to push through this foot. You're going to take your right palm. Your right palm has to be directly under your shoulder. And then you're going to take this left arm and extend it. You're going to reach, but then you're going to make a soft fist. You're going to bring your awareness to your belly and suck it in. Kick the leg up, but not higher than hip level so you don't strain your back. Push through the heel like crazy. Pull it in, elbow to knee, knee to elbow, chin to chest. Inhale, length. Exhale. Inhale, stretch the arm and the leg away. Exhale, hand to the ground, knee down. 
press your butt over to the right. It's like you're pressing your buttocks to the right, but then down. And then stretching the hips over to the left and down. Bring yourself back up. Now look at your uh, knees. And I want you to take a moment to widen your hands just a little more than usual for your down dog. I want you to make room for your shoulders. Curl the toes under, look at your knees, pick your knees up off the floor, press back, downward dog. Downward dog is not so much all in the upper body though. Push your hips back. Then drop your head. You can bend your knees if the back of your legs are tight. And when you breathe out, feel like I'm behind you and I'm pulling your hips straight back as far away from your shoulders as possible. Take the legs together. Inhale the right leg high. Push through the right heel. Bend the upper knee and roll it open. Roll the right hip down. Feel the foot land on the floor. Send your left leg up. Push through the heel. Exhale, bend the knee. The knee and hip are in line with one another so that the leg doesn't feel so heavy. And you want to have the knee and hip in line and then peel the knee and hip open together while breathing out. Then the left hip rolls down and the foot lands. Then you walk your hands towards your feet. Then you bend your knees and press your palms right into your feet. I love this practice because for me, the practice, well, it grounds me. It grounds me to be in my physical body for the rest of the day, present day, reality. You know, December 3rd, 2014. Not what I was up to last Tuesday, not what I was up to five years ago, but right here, right now. Because that's really the only thing we can do anything about. So find your feet. Literally press your palms down into your feet. Then take your hands around your ankles and press them into their sockets. Good. Now walk and look at your hands. You want to walk your hands back to the front edge of your mat, finding your down dog again. But you still make sure the hands have enough width apart for the shoulders to have room. And then you press your hips back. And now you walk, but you want to walk mindfully. See, a lot of our actions in life are because we're not present and we're not really connected to what we're doing. And I want you to get connected to your actions, to your breathing, to the vitality for what's going to make your life work. Bring your palms to the shin bones and lift halfway up. Take the hands to the shoulders and pull them down. There you go. Empty the breath, fold. Take your fingertips around the heels. I want you to press your heels toward the floor. Pull the chest halfway up. Exhale as you fold. Head drop, shoulders move down from the earlobes toward the back. Press down into the floor and inhale up to stand. And exhale, bow. Halfway. And then step back into a push up. We're going to build this. The shoulders stay right over your wrists. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to line my shoulders right up. See that? Press through my heels and that's going to help me get really strong in my legs. If I needed to or you needed to, you can take your knees to the floor, but tilt your tailbone down. Either way, rock forward. Exhale while you bend the elbows and lower the chest halfway down. Inhale, push your palms up. You can put a little bend in your elbows, 
but I want to see your collarbones and shoulders start to open up. Instead of the shoulders rounding, pull them gently away from one another. Heart forward, shoulders back. Curl your toes under. Breathe it out, down dog. Breathe in. And out. One more, breathe in. Push your hips and legs back as you breathe out. Look right between your thumbs. Bring your feet together. Put a big bend in your knees. Get your air out. Then suck in your belly tight. Rock forward. And fly. Halfway up, hands to the shins, shoulders down the back. Exhale, fold. All the way up. Let all your air out fold you in half. Hands to the shins, halfway up. That's when you'll breathe in. As you step back to high push-up, breathe out. Shoulders over the uh, wrists, lower. Then inhale up. Let the air follow and fall right out. And you want to make sure you're in the pose right now, you're not moving. I want you to land your eyes between your feet. I want you to see what you see. And then I need you to breathe in with me. And I'll breathe out with you. The secret is you want to get the exhale stretched out really long. Then let there be a tiny pause at the end of the breath. Then fill up. Then there's a slight pause at the top. Then it all extinguishes out. And then you walk. Then you bring your palms to the shins halfway up. Then you fold. Then you inhale and you lengthen. Now when you breathe in, as long as you're inhaling, as long as you can, the side waist will stretch longer. That's what you want. You'll get more length, therefore more reach, not just stretch. By taking the breath in, it forces you to stand taller. Irons out the spine, you see. You reach up. Then empty the breath, bow, halfway, inhale, step to a high plank, find your tailbone, tilt it towards your feet, rock forward, bend the elbows, breathe out, inhaling up, exhale back, breathe in, let go, breathe in, Exhale. Walk. Halfway. Fold. Press into the floor. Length. Reach high. Exhale. Fold. Halfway. Exhale to step back. Push your heels like they're against a wall. Firm your legs. Pull in the belly. Then rock forward lower. Then up dog. Then the air is going out while you're moving to down dog. Then you're going to bend your right knee. Then you're going to step it forward into your first warrior one. And you're going to turn your back foot down. And if this is at all your first yoga class, I just want to stop you right here and tell you to celebrate how far you've come. And if you've done hundreds of warriors and hundreds of chaturangas, Celebrate how far you've come. You'll find yoga when you're ready to find it. But really, it isn't like that. Yoga finds you. Your knee is right over your ankle. You nudge it open. Then you inhale yourself up. And then you'll breathe and you'll look at one thing. And then you'll exhale to pull the hands to the heart. 
Then you'll breathe in. Then your exhale to open yourself to warrior two. Then your inhale for reverse warrior. Then you're going to exhale the right forearm to the front thigh. The knee will want to cave in all the time as the hip is tight. So look at your right knee. Nudge it to the baby toe side of your foot again. Then take a look at your outer edge of your back foot. I want you to press it like it's against that back wall, the wall behind you. Then open your chest. Extend your left arm up, and then take it over your ear. Press your right knee open a little more. Press the outer edge of the back foot away and let all the length happen from that back foot. Then push into both feet. Bring yourself to warrior two. Reverse once again. Now listen to your exhale. Cartwheel you down. High. Exhale low. Then draw the breath in up. Then empty. Then inhale. Pause. Exhale the breath. Then bend your left knee, step it forward, ground the back foot, inhale up, warrior one. Again, knee over the ankle, arms alongside your ears, palms face each other. Knee will want to pull back a little bit. You have strength to do this though. Like you want to always be, you know, nurturing to yourself, but challenge yourself a little bit too. Get your knee stacked over your ankle. Press it open. Stretch those arms and squeeze these arms. Squeeze them. Breathe in. Exhale, warrior two. Your eyes are landing on your left middle finger. You'll look down at your knee again. You'll press it open. You'll press through the outer edge of the back foot. It's okay to come out of the pose to set the feet right. You want the front heel lined with the middle of your back arch. Otherwise, too much is all in the front leg. Nobody likes to do all the work. You don't, I don't. So bring that back leg into it. And strong back leg, so squeeze the muscle. You have inner thigh muscle, find it. Pull it in. Squeeze it. Then flip your palms, reverse. Then listen to your exhale, move you to extended side. Then take the right arm up. Then take the right arm over. Look at your knee, nudge it open again. You're gonna probably feel something right happening in this inner groin. Breathe into that. And when I mean breathe into it, Really, I mean exhale right now. Then inhale. Then let the breath softly come all the way through. Then push into the feet. Warrior two again. Flip both palms. Listen to your inhale. Reverse your warrior. Stretch your left arm as far away from your left side and hip. And then cartwheel as you breathe out. High plank. Lower. Breathe in. Then send the breath through. In breath. Out. All right, go for this. You want to walk your toes up. How about bring your toes together, actually. Bend the knees out to the sides. Then bend both elbows. It's like your knees are climbing up onto the backs of your arms. With your knees on the backs of your arms, rock your body weight forward. Hug the elbows in toward each other like a low push-up. And then maybe you just lean forward enough 
and maybe this is all you do. But pull in your belly, and maybe you lean forward in a way where the feet, they pick up without you even knowing about it. And maybe you'll fall, and that's okay. Falling is learning. But if you're breathing, you're going to be very mindful as to why you fell. You're going to figure out, oh, maybe I pitched too far forward too soon. Maybe I was in a big hurry. And I don't encourage that in this practice. I encourage you to work mindfully, which means pay attention. And then you'll know. So we're going to do it again. Your feet are together. You lift up your hips. You bend the knees, and you think of your arms like a shelf. Press the uh, backs of the... Press the knees into the backs of the arms. It's kind of hard to talk while I do this, so bear with me, but breathe with me, and I'll breathe with you. Hug the elbows in, okay? Just rock your body weight forward, and maybe this is all you're going to do. But then maybe, because you pulled your belly in, and also you want to look right out in front of you. If you look down, you're probably going to fall down. Otherwise, you can bring the toes up. And then you can come down. Okay? Now you have a new party trick to show your friends. While you're right here, turn your toes out nice and wide apart. Drop your butt down. All I want you to do is take your right palm on the floor. Open your left chest. Open your left lung. Stretch the arm. While you're pressing this knee, and inner leg open. So press it back. Breathe with me in. Listen to your exhale. Wrap the upper arm. Pull the chest up. Press that right side open. Then the left hand down. Nudge that elbow. Knee open. Then exhale the right arm behind you. And then, down dog. Let your eyes land right between your feet. Push your butt straight back. You're going to be in your body the rest of your life. What I love about this practice is this practice actually got me awake to how I, not only how I fed my body, but the self-talk that I had was absolutely junk food, <laughs> not soul food. You're going to take your right foot forward just to the outside of your right hand. Then I'd like you to press through the back heel, knee over the ankle once again. Bring yourself up. Just bring your shoulders over your hips. And wrap your elbows in. You can bend your back knee. Lengthen your tailbone down. You're going to stretch your arms up. You're going to exhale to bend back. Then you're going to inhale where you are. Then you're going to open the mouth and let the breath go. You're going to press the back heel a little bit toward the floor, but not flat this time just to keep that back leg like plugged in. Otherwise, there's too much on the front. Take your torso, spin it to the um, right side of the room. Bring your hands to your heart. Left elbow. Twist your uh, chest open. Take your back heel and just spin it out a little bit, just a little, but still push through the heel. Get length away from your back heel. And then bottom fingertips. If you don't have yoga blocks, you can still be in the game. You can still be a member. You can always just take a couple of phone books. Sometimes I've taken uh, my gallon jug of water. Whatever will work. Stretch open. You're 
You're tweaking your digestive system right now in a good way. You're going to take the back knee. Whoops. Hold on a sec. What is it they say? We're experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> really, I just want you to do a practice with me that it allows you to just lighten up the rest of the day. You know, shit's going to happen. Stuff's going to go wrong. Something's going to break. You've got to learn how to roll with it or you'll be in a constant reaction. And there's no power in that. You live your life on edge all the time. I'm not telling you any information from an ivory tower. Like I don't know anything about reaction or I don't know anything about fear or stress. I'm telling you from being in the trenches and that this practice has given me tools to be a little less reactive, a little less on edge for me because I only know about that. I come from that as an upbringing. Yoga has helped me to unlearn a lot of stuff along the way. And that's all I share with you. Let's get back to what we're doing, shall we? You're going to take your left foot. You're going to lunge it. Again, just to the outside of that hand. And you're going to curl your back toes under. You're going to push through the heel. And you're going to bring yourself up. You're going to turn your torso. You're going to bring the palms together. And then you're taking the right elbow and twisting it. You want to stretch that spine before you twist it. There you go. Extend through the arms. Make sure that your shoulder and your wrists are in line. And you don't want to press down, press down, press down to, to put compression in the shoulder or in the joints. You want to be light. Press down so that you're rooted, but so that you get lift. Hands to the floor. Take this right leg, launch it up to the ceiling. Bend the upper knee, flex the foot. It's helpful to me if I just rock my shoulders forward and flip. So my shoulders stay over the wrist. And my arm goes up. And then my arm stretches away from my right hip. A lot of times I'll see shoulder and, align and wrist not lined up. So I'm going to tell you what you can do. Walk your feet back towards your bottom wrist. Ta-da! <laughs> Hand back to the floor. Legs together, feet together. Please spin your heels to the right for side plank. Or take the right knee and chin on the ground and the left foot flat. And then open up. Then hand down. Vinyasa. Then back in a high push up. You're going to decide to take the left knee and shin down. Or the legs and feet together. Shoulders over the wrists. Push through the heels. Squeeze up the legs. And spin your heels left. Oh, and now we got to flip. Oh, I screwed it up. Everything's going to be all messed up now. Take the arm. Set it up. Shoulder. Over the bottom wrist, hug the bottom shoulder blade into the mid back. Bring it back. High plank. 
Lower down with a smile. You're getting stronger and you're going to be a little less stressed the rest of the day. Up dog. Down dog. In. All out with the breath. Walk up. Halfway. Fold. Reach high. Hands to the heart. Land your eyes on one thing in front of you. But you're not checked out. You're actually the opposite. You're plugged in. And when you breathe like this, you're going to feel. And if you feel, it's going to stir some things up, but in a good way. Keep breathing with me. And whatever comes up will just pass through. Left hand on the left hip. Bring the right knee in. Hug the right leg toward you. So literally, if I squeeze my leg toward me, toward my lower belly on the right side, I have more stability. And then I just simply take the right leg out to the side. Left arm out. You can look over the left shoulder. You can come back. Bring both hands to the hips. Extend through the leg. Pull the toes back. Push through the heel and the ball of the foot. Airplane. The right leg goes straight back. Flex through the right foot. Take your arms alongside your body. Hug them toward the sides of your body. Pull your chest up. Tuck your chin down so that you look out at the floor out in front of you, not straight down. Hug the shoulders in. So literally, hug your shoulder blades, squeeze them into your middle back. Bring your hands to your heart. Take that leg straight up. Kick it high. As While you're kicking the heel high, press down through the center of the bottom heel. And then release. Separate the feet out. Take opposite hand, opposite elbow, ragdoll. Let your hips sway to the right. And then let your hips sway to the left. Please bend your knees. Then bring your hands to your hips. Push down into the floor with your feet. Come right on up to stand. Left side. Your right leg is where it's at, okay? It's your foundation. So you're going to squeeze this leg like crazy. Press through that foot like you're pushing it down into the floor. Not so much you get all cramped up. That happens to a lot of students. You want to find where you press down to get stable but not f feel pain. Okay, bend that knee. Hug it in. Right hand on the hip. Elbow in. Breathe in. Stay right here. Or just open the knee out to the right. Maybe the arm comes out. Or maybe it doesn't. But keep the elbow wrapped in if it doesn't. Okay, both hands to the hips. Swing that leg straight back. Take those arms straight back. Pull that chest up. Tuck your chin in a bit so your neck has length while you look out in front of you. I want you to take a piece of your life where you always have a reaction to it that's not pretty. It's not a favorite piece of your life, but a challenge in your life. And I want you to look at your situation literally from an airplane pose perspective. Bend the knee, bring your hands to your heart. Take the leg straight up. Bring your shoulders right over your wrist though, okay? Even if the bottom knee is bent, it's okay. Kick that leg up. Push through that heel. 
Push through the bottom heel. Exhale, the leg to the floor. Lift up the toes and take the palms directly underneath your feet. Pull your chest forward. Move your shoulders down from your ears. And breathe out when you fold. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Then suck your belly in. Let your head drop. Then release your hands out from under your feet. Move into a down dog. Rock your body weight forward to a high push up. Then a lower. Then breathe in. Then breathe out. Head drops. Taking your knees down and take your mat, the front edge, fold it over a lot. Fold it over like six times. It might seem excessive, but basically I'm trying to get you to nurture yourself a little more than you usually do. Bring your knees hip width apart. Take care of your low back by tilting it down. Then when you go to bend back, you'll be safer because you won't have this compression. And you're going to then press your hips forward. You're going to hug your elbows toward each other. You're going to press your shoulders down. You're going to breathe in. Maybe your head falls back. If it doesn't feel OK, just keep your chin down or look straight ahead. Otherwise, you can tuck the chin in, then let the head come back. Then I want you to come on back up. Actually, all I want you to do is just sit your butt on your heels, legs together. Rest your palms on your thighs. Take a moment to close your eyes. So you're still breathing with me, and I'm with you. Okay. I'd like you to stay on your left knee. Again, it's totally okay if you fold the mat over. But then I want you to press through this right leg. Press it straight. I want you to take some stretch. Then I want you to do the same on the left. So now the right knee comes down. The right foot is flat. Open through the left side. And then take the upper arm over your ear. Then you're going to come back. And then you're going to come out onto your back. Okay? You're going to bring your feet in towards your butt. Then your hips go up. And you make sure that the feet are underneath. The ankles are underneath your knees. OK? And then you're interlacing your hands. Lean to the left. Pull the right shoulder down from your ear. Pull the left side down. Hug both toward each other. Press the back of your head. Press your shoulders and arms and feet down. So the hips go forward and the heart presses toward your face. And then exhale down. Breathe in. Empty the breath. Is 
set it up again for bridge. Lift the hips up a little bit. Start lengthening your tailbone toward the backs of your knees. Then interlace. And here you are. If, if, if you felt like it, you could always take your hands to your low back and give yourself absolute support. That feels pretty good. Come down. Okay, take a breath and let go. Then bring your uh, feet up and then take your feet, legs straight up. Your ankles, hips lined. You then interlace your hands like behind your head. The elbows will stay out to the sides. You're going to crunch up. You'll count for me, okay? Actually, I want you to bang out however many until you start to feel a little burn. Then I want you to do a few more until you feel like you're starting to get a little agitated with me for making you do this. <laughs> and then I want you to crank out five more after that. You may not always like me during this practice, but you'll thank me later. Is that good? All right, five more. From your head and shoulders off the ground too, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Bring your knees, bend them. You want your ankles and your knees to line up. Then you're gonna take your hands under your butt. You're gonna lift your head and shoulders up off the floor. Hold on, that hurts, <laughs> okay. Sometimes you'll have to adjust yourself in your poses. Me too. That's why I understand you. I'm not different than you. Not really. Press the right leg out. Then pull the right leg in, left leg out. Lift up a little higher. And go for it. Oh, here's the pain in the butt part. I don't want your knees to go past your hips. I don't want them to go past your waistband. Because I want you to actually find your core and work that. Otherwise, the hip flexors do all the work. Things nobody ever told me, and I was doing it the opposite way for years. So you want to bring a quality to your movements. That's why I'm teaching a class that's a little slower paced today. You may have forgotten about some of these muscles in your body. They haven't forgotten you. They probably didn't get an opportunity to get developed. More surface strength, more surface stuff. I'm trying to get you to run a little deeper than that. That's why it's edgy, though. Okay. Oh, I feel that. Do you feel that? Again. Take a deep breath in. Exhale it out. I want you to bring yourself up to flat feet. I want you to take your left leg out. I want you to bring your right leg in. Knee over the ankle. I want you to take your left arm, bend the left elbow, and I want you to right hand to the floor, I forgot to mention. I want you to push your butt into the ground Lift out of your low back a little bit. Your inhale lengthens you, and the exhale twists you. When you twist, suck your gut in. Right where you are, right here, stay. Breathe in here. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. Great. Now you're going to take this foot. You're going to bring it to the inner thigh. 
You're going to sit up tall. And you're going to exhale to fold. You can keep this left knee bent. If you're tight, you want to do that. But you want to pull the toes back on this foot. Okay? And from there... And that's great that you're pulling the toes back, but I want you to also push through this heel. And again, the knee can be bent. When you inhale, you want your spine to get ironed out, lengthen it tall. When you exhale, you'll fold. Then you'll breathe in. And you'll breathe out. If your leg is straight, I want you to press the back of your thigh into the ground. And also, your calf. Now you're coming up, and now you're taking this left foot in, and you're extending this leg out. Then you're getting ready for, yes, twist. Bend the elbow, okay? Fingertips to the ground, sit up nice and tall, breathe in. Listen to your breath out. Stop right where you think you're stuck, breathe in there. Exhale to twist. And I want you to just take this foot, press it nicely up against this inner right thigh. You're going to inhale, sit up tall, and bend that knee if you need to, but let your exhale be what softens you toward the floor. Push out through that right heel like you're pushing the center of your right heel into a wall. And if the knee is bent, it'll still work. We'll inhale length. Exhale the fold. Your eyes closed. Notice when you inhale, the upper body starts to lift and it doesn't need your permission. It just does it. And then when you exhale, the upper body releases. And the more you breathe in, and then the more you make the exhale longer, you'll drop in exactly to where you're kind of tensed or tight, locked up. And the inhales create a little opening. They create some light in the dark. Come on back up. Take the legs both out in front of you. Forward bends are a really powerful way to bring a sense of grounded ease to your nervous system. And so we'll finish out like that. You can keep your knees bent. You can open the legs and feet apart wider to make more room if your uh, hips and pelvis are still pretty tight. But your exhales, you just hand them over. It'll take you into a new space. Maybe something you cared about or you were so super stressed out or irritated by. Maybe right now, if you check in with yourself, you'll think like, ah, who cares? Who cares? Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? To me, this practice is miraculous because over time it started to loosen up some of the rigidness and fixed way of my own ego my perception to something, it allowed a little more flexibility there. Not just flexibility in my legs or my spine or my shoulders, but more malleable, malleable, malleable. <laughs> make your way out into your back. 
Please take your right leg, cross it over your left. And arms out to the sides. Go ahead and take the knees left while you press the chin into your right shoulder. If you were struggling to breathe or recognizing you weren't breathing a whole lot, you might have felt kind of lost in the practice. Like, huh, what was the question? But if you focused on deeper breathing, handing over all the exhales, you'll be more plugged in naturally to your own body. Bring your knees back up. And just let your knees drop to the right, chin left. Bring your knees back to center. Left leg over. Knees go right. Chin left. And back up. Knees go left, chin right. Back up, feet super wide apart, off the, off the mat even, that's fine, and letting the knees gently drop in toward each other. Lift your shoulders up and take them down your back. Bring the soles of the feet together, and the knees can fall apart. You can take your left leg out. You can take your right leg out. You want to stretch the legs out of the hips a little bit. And then the legs are apart just enough to make room for your pelvis. The arms slide apart just enough so that your shoulders have an opportunity to land on the ground. The more we can let the breath go free, the more it'll ease the nervous system. The more the nervous system doesn't feel a need to be so on edge, it, the more we move into something other than fight or flight. Your eyes are closed while I speak. So a lot of times when we don't breathe much and we don't breathe deep, we will always ruminate with the same old thoughts. We'll analyze the same thing over and over. We'll focus a lot on the past. We'll be wondering what's going to happen in the future. And that's when you know you're in your head too much. The more you breathe, the more you start moving into the, the house that really is your body. Your physical body is just a house for your human spirit. And when your spirit's gone... But while your spirit's here, while you're here, alive, right here, right now, breathe in a way where it's like, wow, the lights are not just on, but I'm home. And then you know you found something other than stress, anxiety, Agitation, rage, depression, restlessness. A lot of us only live there and call that home and wonder why we're not. We wonder why we look for an escape. We wonder why we need an exit. We wonder why we need to run from our thoughts and our feelings.
So when you can breathe more freely, you'll be more relaxed in mind, more settled emotionally. You'll feel more at home in your own skin. Hug your knees into your chest. Breathe out while you hug the legs towards you. Roll completely to your right side. Lift up your head. Take your bottom arm. Make a pillow for your head with your bottom arm. Maybe the other arm too. Why not? Create like temper pedic support. If you feel more relaxed, you'll be more grounded. If we're not relaxed, we don't really feel that grounded either. We'll be kind of all over the place. And that's not just you or people you don't like. That's me too. That logo behind me and the name Road Home. Road Home was really only about one thing, feeling comfortable in my own skin. Yoga is really the only place I ever felt comfortable in my own skin. Add in a couple of close, close friends um, being around my children who are now adults and also practice. There are just very few places I ever found ease. I don't know who you are, but I surely would love to hear from you, your feedback, what yoga is doing for you, um, requests. I am so honored that something that brought ease to my own skin is what I get to share with you. I just want you to feel at home in your own skin, and I just want you to know it's safe to breathe with me. I don't know about the rest of your life, <laughs> but I offer you that. I'll see you soon. Take care. Big love to yourself. Good food. Lots of water. And love. And rest, too. Take care.